My name is Carol Flavin and I'm a railway modeler and I have a railway at home that is called Edgehay and Strines Railway. This video is how I made an area of scenics that I'm very pleased with and that is that it's a white water river that runs off from a lake. Hello my name is Carol Flavin. I've been making a few videos recently how I did things on my layout and this particular video is about how I made or how I did some white water runoff from a lake through some cliffs. Now that lake is on my lift up board and it was a tricky bit of scenics to do because it has two tracks across it, a viaduct, a lower track and it also has a road. And I decided that I really, really wanted to model a lake. So there's a previous video that I've done on how I modelled that lake. This one is about the white water runoff that I made from it. I love making water, hence the fact that this lake and this river probably justified two separate videos because of the techniques I use. I hope you'll find them interesting. I hope you'll get some good ideas from them and that you will be able to use those on your own layout if you choose to. This is the layout that I extended with my grandchildren just before lockdown and it went from an L shape to a square with a hole in the middle and a lift up. The lift up bit is where the lake's going and the cliffs that you saw on the right are where the runoff water white water is. I did terraforming by creating cliffs, adding height with filler. That stick, by the way, fills the gap between the lift up section and the rest of it when the lift up bit is down. I've started to paint it as well. So I'm adding a sandy colour around the edges. And I started off by putting blue on. I did realise at this stage that the blue was too bright and I went on at a later stage to add more green and brown. So the colours in my palette are indigo, black, dark brown, hunter's green, a different brown, a sandy colour, white and violet. I'm an artist. So what you see here is how I've used my paints and my brushes to create the look of water before I start to use the other products that give the depth and the flow and the movement. I'm ready to form the white water section where the river runs off from my lake. Now it probably superficially looks finished already. It's got rocks, it's got some gravel, it's got painted in colour and currents. But what I'm going to do now is put the actual water on it. Now I don't pour water anymore. I use something called heavy structure gel and I put it in place using a variety of different spatulas. Once I'm happy with it, I'm then in a position to add possibly a bit more gravel, which I've got ready in a pot here, probably some additional reeds. Um, and I have two different types, some quite tall, thin ones and some rather wider ones. And if you put those into the heavy structure gel, as you're doing this, what happens is that you don't get the same problem of meniscus forming that you do when you do the pouring water. So this is the structure gel. It's inside the pot. It looks a bit messy because I've been attacking it recently for stuff. Putting it onto the first, onto the wider spatula, I start to spread it onto the surfaces. Now I'm standing in the position where the water is running off towards me um, and I'm doing that deliberately because it's better and easier to get the feel for the water going in the right direction. Now this is white, it doesn't stay white, it dries clear but you still get the texture on it. So I'm just going to use a slightly thinner spatula to move the water around the rocks here and on this section here and I'm going to work on this and show you it when it's finished. If you look at the water now you can see that it's got 
the movement that water would have as it runs off down through a fairly narrow gorge. Now this will dry completely clear, but what I will be doing um, is putting the last now of these reeds in place. Um, if I'd been sensible, I'd have brought a uh, pair of tweezers, but I forgot. So I'm doing this just with my hands, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more gravel in here. Just a few bits here, along here, a little bit down the middle too, because there would be gravel and rocks. A bit more there, because this is where it accumulates as it goes round corners and things. So what I'm aiming for is as much realism as possible. So that to me looks about right. It'll take a day or so to dry. About halfway through the process, what's underneath dries and you're left with the bits that stick up. Now at that stage, sometimes it's actually worth getting your white paint out and painting it then. But I think I will wait and see how it goes and I will just simply show it to you when I'm ready to do it. I did this yesterday and I put the heavy structure gel on it. It's now partly dry. Uh, what you can see in this section down here, which is still white or greyish actually at the moment, is where it isn't fully dry. Top section over here, I've already put a bit of white paint on it to show the currents because what you do is you pick out the higher bits with your brush. They're the ones that will give you the flow and as it dries this is already then in place. Um, once I've done this I'll tidy it up slightly and it will then be left for another day or two to pro properly dry and then I can work on adding the depth again because it tends with the white br brush done like this to um, diminish the depth. Once the structure gel had dried, I realised I'd been a bit generous with the white paint and I repainted the depth using indigo grey and black paint. This river runs off between some cliffs and I have actually done a separate video that explains how I make cliffs. This photograph is taken right down very nearly at water level and shows the movement and flow of the river and how realistic it can look when you've worked on it. This short video clip gives you an idea about what the lake looks like and its surface and some of its environs. There is a little bridge with some people on it and the water runs away round the end of some cliffs and forms the basis of the white water section between those cliffs and the cliffs on the other side. And I just thought you might like to see what it looks like from close to. This last clip shows you a little pond, some steps, a view of the viaduct and the river from the other side. Well, I hope you found the hints and the tips in this How I Did It video useful that there were some ideas that you could use for yourself. And I will probably make a few more if people show enough interest in them. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. I will hope to see you again. Bye-bye.